I'd once again like to extend our thanks to our local police department uh, for maximizing the entertainment value of this channel. It just goes to show you, good people, that if you are kind and respectful and obedient to police officers, you follow their commands, and you make sure to give them a warm smile whenever they bark at your face, that they'll tell you stories, wonderful stories that you can share to a YouTube audience for their entertainment and satisfaction. In particular, I'd like to make a note of gratitude to the police officer that gave me the story in the first place. He uh, made the same mistake that my general manager did when she hired me to, uh, to help run the Moonlight Inn. That mistake was to entrust the responsibility of overseeing the Moonlight Inn and the stories that happened there to a writer with a camera. And so to you, sir, I give my thanks for making my audience smile. This officer was doing what a lot of officers do whenever they're driving past the Moonlight Inn, and that's to go ahead and uh, try to find people with warrants. And uh, as we were trying to deduce where one particular vehicle was located at, and uh, whatever criminal decided to go ahead and stay there this particular night, as we were as we were trying to check up on that, he tells me a funny story, a funny story that was just too funny not to tell to this channel. This story doesn't necessarily happen at the Moonlight Inn. Rather, it happens at the hotel next to the Moonlight Inn. That hotel is uh, not too different from the Moonlight Inn, as a matter of fact. In fact, if anything, it services the same exact disgusting, wretched, despicable fucking clientele that comes to the Moonlight Inn. Except this particular hotel, however, uh, houses all the people that we thought were too crazy for our hotel. And so to this day, that's why I call that particular hotel the Refugee Camp. And this story happens at this hotel. The hotel is right next to ours, and it is at that hotel that this story occurs. But it happens close enough to our vicinity to be considered within the ever-expanding oeuvre of horrific stories that continues to grow every single day. So the story starts when the local police department gets a phone call uh, from the refugee camp. Uh, they had a little bit of a problem. One of the guys that had been staying at the hotel he stole uh, one of the brand new TVs that they had just bought from out of the rooms and ran through the woods. And that's how the phone call started. I think it was like some homeless guy. He was just staying there for a night. Before he would go back to his itinerant life, he decided to take something with him. And uh, that the refugee camp was not too happy about that. So they decided to go ahead and call the cops and let's see if they can handle it. Just behind the refugee camp in the Moonlight Inn are these woods. It is not recommended you go through these woods because crazy people with running away with TVs might be in them. These woods behind both the Moonlight Inn and the uh, and the refugee camp. It's sectioned off with this fence, and uh, the dude went past this you know like small opening within this fence that leads to a cement path to a couple of generators down near the bottom behind the two establishments. Uh, the dude uh, run uh, oh goes through the gate. The dude goes through the gate runs off into the woods so these two intrepid police officers they uh they go ahead and go step behind the gate and walk down that cement path and not too far away from uh from that you know little section with elect uh, electrical generators that's where um that's where dude buddy is hiding and there he is sitting with his uh with the tv cuddled near his lap and just and holding it around his arms uh, like a dragon protecting the treasure in that fucking uh, Hobbit movie. So the two cops go down. They're walking down this path. Uh, the the homeless guy sees them. The cops are you know calling to him. They they said that they had a report of a man who had stolen a TV. And so the dude does what anybody else would do, and that's to go ahead and get a fucking glass bottle from the ground smash it to little pieces and then just charge at the police officers and if any of you are concerned about the welfare of this uh poor deranged homeless man fret not good people because he was white and so he was never in any danger at all so the police officer instead of shooting him he takes out his baton his little titanium baton and uh as the as the dude is lunging at him he I think grabs his arm, disarms him, and then starts wailing on him with his fucking titanium baton right along with his friend. You know, playing a game of fucking pinata with this uh, fucking crazy man that stole a TV. So, uh, crazy dude is taken out of the woods, alive, and uh, in handcuffs. 
you know, they're, you know, they're stepping out. They're putting him in the back of the police car. And uh, he gets sent over to the local jail where they gave him a psychiatric evaluation so that he can attest to the mental state of a man that assaulted a police officer with a, uh, with a, with a broken glass bottle. And so, dude gets charged with theft and, of course, assault of a police officer. And it just goes to show that you never truly get rid of any of the people at the Moonlight Inn. They just kind of crawl around in this general area waiting for a moment to strike. There are only more stories coming your way. Plenty of stories to tell, guys. Let me know what you guys think at the comment section down below. Hit like and, of course, subscribe to Stoner Scribe. And make sure to hit that little bell so that way I can keep dumping more bullshit right down your throbbing gullet. And you'll love it. You'll love every second of it. I love you guys. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.